Hello, this is Mr. Ganino, and today I am reading Dr. Seuss's Sleep Book. Originally published in 1962 by Random House, we received permission from Penguin Random House to record this book for Boy Spears Elementary School. Permission is granted through July 1st of 2020. This book is to be read in bed. Okay. So, Let's go ahead and get started on Dr. Seuss's sleep book. Uh, it was one of his original books that he uh, wrote and published. And as I said earlier, in 1962, which is a long, long time ago, that's for sure. The news just came in from the county of Keck that a very small bug by the name of Van Veck is yawning so wide you can look down his neck. This may not seem very important, I know, but it is, so I'm bothering telling you so. A yawn is quite catching, you see, like a cough. It just takes one yawn to start others' yawns off. Now the news has come in that some friends of Van Vleck's are yawning so wide you can look down their necks. At this moment, right now, under seven more noses, great yawns are in blossom. They're blooming like roses. The yawn of that one little bug is still spreading. According to latest reports, it is heading across the wide fields through the sleepy night air, across the whole country toward every which where, and people are gradually starting to say, I feel rather drowsy. Oh, I've had quite a day. Creatures are starting to think about rest. Two biffer bomb birds are now building their nest. They do it each night and quite often I wonder how they do this big job without making a blunder. But that is their problem, not yours and not mine. The point is they're going to bed and that's fine. Sleep thoughts are spreading throughout the whole land. The time for night brushing of teeth is at hand. Up at Herkheimer Falls, where the great river rushes and crashes down crags in great gargling gushes, the Herkheimer sisters are using their brushes. Those falls are just grand for tooth brushing beneath, if you happen to be up that way with your teeth. The news just came in from the castle of Krupp that the lights are all out with the drawbridges up and the old drawbridge drawer just said with a yawn, oh, my drawbridge is down and it's going to stay drawn till the milkman delivers the milk about dawn. I'm going to bed now so nobody better come round with a special delivery letter. The number of sleepers is steadily growing. Bed is where more and more people are going. In Culpeper Springs and the Stilt Walkers Hall, the Stilt Walker stilts are all stacked on the wall. The Stilt Walker walkers have called it a day. They're all tuckered out and they're snoozing away. This is very big news. It's important to know. And that's why I'm bothering telling you so. Way out in the west, in the town of Merced, the Hinklehorn Honky Club just went to bed. Every horn has been quietly hung on a hook for the night in its own private Hinklehorn nook. All this long happy day they've been honking about and the Hinklehorn honkers have honked themselves out. But they'll wake up quite fresh in the morning and they'll start right in Hinklehorn honking again. Counting up sleepers, just how do we do it? Really quite simple, there's nothing much to it. We find out how many we learn the amount by an audio tally o tally o count. On a mountain, halfway between Reno and Rome, we have a machine at a plexiglass dome, which listens and looks into everyone's home, and whenever it sees a new sleeper go flop, it jiggles and lets a new biggle ball drop. 
Our chap counts these balls as they plump in a cup. And that's how we know who is down and who's still up. Do you talk in your sleep? It's a wonderful sport. And I have some news of the sport to report. The world champion sleep talkers Joe and Mo Redzoff have just gone to sleep and they're talking their heads off. For 55 years now, each chattering brother has babbled and gabbled all night to the other. They've talked about laws and they've talked about things. They've talked about paws and they've talked about flings. They've talked quite a lot about old Santa Claus. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you should take up the sport. It's just fine for the jaw. Do you walk in your sleep? I just had a report of some interesting news of this popular sport. Near Finning and Fen, there's a sleepwalking group, which not only walks, but it walks a la hoop. Every night they go miles while they walk to such length, they have to keep eating to keep up their strength. So every so often one puts down his hoop, stops hooping and does some quick snooping for soup. That's why they are known as the Hoop Snoop Snoop Group. Sleepwalking too are the curious crandles who sleepwalk on hills with assorted sized candles. The crandles walk nightly in slumbering peace in spite of slight burns from the hot dripping grease. The crandles wear candles because they walk far and if they wake up, they want to see where they are. Now, the news has arrived from the Valley of Vale that a Chippendale Mupp has just bitten his tail, which he does every night before shutting his eyes. Such nippy sounds silly, but really, it's wise. He has no alarm clock, so this is the way. He makes sure that he'll wake up at the right time of day. His tail is so long he won't feel any pain. Till the nip makes a trip and gets to his brain in exactly eight hours, the Chippendale Mupp will at last feel the biting now, ouch, and wake up. A Mr. and Mrs. J. Carmichael Crocs have just gone to bed near the town of Fort Knox. And they, by the way, have the finest of clocks. I'm not at all sure that I quite, quite understand just how the thing works with that one extra hand. But I do know this clock does one very slick trick. It doesn't tick tock. How it goes is tock tick. So with ticks in its tocker and tocks in its ticker, it saves lots of time and the sleepers sleep quicker. What a fine night for sleeping from all that I hear. It's the best night for sleeping in many a year. They're even asleep in the Zweibeck Motel and people don't usually sleep there so well. The beds are like rocks and as everybody knows, the sheets are too short. They won't cover your toes. So if people are actually sleeping in there, it's a great night for sleeping. It must be the air. It's a great night for snores. I just had a report of some boys who are tops of this musical sport. The snoriest snores in all our fair land are Snorter McPhail and his Snora Snort Band. This band can snort Dixie and Old Suwannee River so loud it would make 40 elephants shiver. Whoo! The loudest of all the boys is McPhail. He snores with his head in a three gallon pail. So they snore in a cave 20 miles out of town. If they snored closer in, they would snore the town down. Do you know who's asleep out in Funa Laguna? Two very nice Funa Laguna Babuna. <laughs> We've added them into our who's asleep count which has grown to a really amazing amount, exactly 8,808 creatures are sleeping now. Isn't that great? A Jed is in bed and the bed of a Jed is the softest of beds in the world. It is said he makes it from pom poms. He grows on his head and he's sleeping right now on the softest of fluff, completely exhausted from growing the stuff. The news has come in from the district of Duft that too oft 
are sleeping and they're sleeping aloft. And how are they able to sleep off the ground? I'll tell you why. What, what one last week and I found that an oft is so light he weighs minus one pound. How can that be? A moose is asleep, he is dreaming of moose drinks. A goose is asleep, he is drinking of goose drinks. That's well and good when a moose dreams of moose juice, and nothing goes wrong with a goose dreams of goose juice. But it isn't so good when a moose and a goose start dreaming they're drinking the other one's juice. Moose juice, not goose juice, is juice for a moose. And goose juice, not moose juice, is juice for a goose. So when goose gets a mouthful of juices of mooses and moose gets a mouthful of juices of gooses, they always fall out of their bed screaming screams. So I'm warning you now, never drink in your dreams. At the fork of a road in a vale of avode, five foot weary salesmen have laid down their load. All day they've raced round in the heat at top speeds, unsuccessfully trying to sell zithers of seeds which nobody wants because nobody needs. Tomorrow will come, they'll go back to their chore. They'll start on the road, zither zooping once more, but tonight they've forgotten their feet are so sore. And that's what the wonderful nighttime is for. Everywhere creatures have shut off their voices. They've all gone to bed in the bed of their choices. They're sleeping in bushes, they're sleeping in crannies some on their stomachs and some on their fannies. They're peacefully sleeping in comfortable holes, some even on soft tufted barbershop poles. The number of sleepers is now past the millions. The number of sleepers is now in the billions. They're sleeping on steps and on strings and on floors, in mailboxes, ships and the keyholes of doors. Every worm on a fish hook is safe for the night. Every fish in the sea is too sleepy to bite. Every whale in the ocean has turned off his spout. Every light between here and Farfoodle is out. And now, adding things up, we are way beyond billions. Our who's asleep score is now up in the zillions. When you put out your light, then the number will be 99 zillion. Nine trillion and three. And that is the end of our Dr. Seuss book. Sleep well. Bye bye.